Thank you for joining us today, Sakura-san. The results of the DNA test are in. So now in the case of three-year-old Futaba, the daughter of Wakaba Ishiki, you are not. You never see it come back. Ladies and weebs, what we have witnessed today was a murder. The death of a man's pride. Don't let this comically time me fool you. This man is in pain. Behind those screens of joy are cries of pain. In the case of Sojiro Sakura, a man that is a bona fide player slash pimp is a shadow of his former self. Chasing after a woman for her every need that has no interest in him whatsoever. Am I saying that Sojiro is a simp? Well, in so many words, it may seem that way. But I'll let you decide that. The real question is though, who is the man that beat Sakura-san to <clears throat> home plate? Well, that is what we're here to figure out today. <coughs> okay, I, I can't keep it up with that voice. Play my music. Welcome back, YouTube fam. Okay, look, I know what you're thinking, and I'm not gonna waste your time here, okay? Now, all of us most likely have a feeling on who is the best candidate to be Futaba's father. And I'll let you know right now, I feel the same way too. And don't you worry, we will get to that bald and thirsty sugar daddy. But that doesn't mean we can't have some fun. During my time researching this mystery, I came across some pretty fun and interesting theories regarding the mysterious identity of Futaba's father. Connections that I would have never have seen or realized if I hadn't taken the time to investigate the topic myself. So hopefully you guys will find these revelations interesting as well. So without wasting any more of your time, let's have some fun, shall we? Diving deep into this rabbit hole, you will come across two names which constantly come up in conversations about the topic. One of which is definitely a prime suspect, but instead of taking the most direct and obvious path, let's take a road less traveled and focus on a more obscure target. Let me introduce Kaoru Saga aka Baofu. We'll just be calling him Baofu for consistency. Now, I won't be shocked if you guys don't know whose mans this is, but my boy Baofu is kind of another excuse for me to talk about Persona 2, and more specifically, Persona 2 Eternal Punishment, the sequel to Innocent Sin. At first glance, we can see why Baofu is such an interesting candidate. On looks alone, you can see a striking resemblance to Futaba. Oh my god, what is my man smoking? <laughs> okay, very funny, very funny. You call this quality content? Yo, what the f- Can't he see the hair color is completely different? Come on, man. Okay, yeah, you can chill now. Yo, dead ass. Kenna must have been doped out of his mind researching this video. Futaba and Baofu share some striking similarities when it comes to their designs. Futaba's hairstyle is a spitting image of Baofu's. And I mean, all you have to do is give Futaba black hair and damn son, we be Gucci. Police! Instant thumbs down, unsubbed, got him. Hey yo man, chill! It ain't that serious, damn! My gosh, B. And Futaba having black hair isn't that out of a concept. Literally, because originally, Futaba was originally designed with black hair in mind in her early drafts of development, in the concept stage. And canonically, it was revealed by, I'm so sorry, I'm gonna butcher this name, Shiginori Sojima, the lead character designer that Futaba actually dyes her hair to be a redhead. This bit of commentary can be found within the official Persona 5 art book. And this isn't the only instance where a character is known to dye their hair in game either. The Phantom Thieves resident bad boy Ryuji dyes his hair blonde out of rebellion. In the opening hours of the game, Kawakami is seen pressing Ryuji on the matter, urging him to change his hair back to dress code. And I'll be real with you guys, the rabbit hole that I discovered while researching Ryuji is pretty deep on its own, but that would be a topic for another day. The point is, even though Futaba is a straight up Higikomori, Otaku, a neat, wow, man, this girl's a triple threat, she still takes pride in her appearance and her individuality, enough to go out of her way to color her own hair. But Keta, you already just established not even five seconds ago that our girl Futaba isn't leaving the flipping house. How's she gonna have her hair dyed? Well, for one, Sojira is no stranger to running errands for the Moonlighting Hacker. And secondly, Futaba is resourceful. I mean, she could dye her hair herself. I mean, come on. The reason why I want to go over this because 
I don't want to rule out any possible candidates on just because they have the wrong flippin' hair color. Which brings us back to Baofu. Besides the looks department, Baofu and Futaba have similarities when it comes to their skills, personalities, and personas. Both characters are reclusive and socially awkward in their respective games in the beginning of their arcs. Possibly a personality trait that Futaba inherited from her father, or theoretical father. Speaking of inheritance, both characters share similar blood types, while Baofu being AB and Futaba being AB negative. With Baofu possibly being a parent, it's only natural that Futaba would pick up on some of his interests, like her natural affinity with technology and being a hacker prodigy. Now you could say that Futaba got her love for tech from her mother Wakaba, but what if I told you that Baofu was tech savvy himself, with him being an expert hacker during his time, specifically excelling in wiretapping. That alone makes things way more suspicious, now doesn't it? Now I know this isn't anything definitive, but with multiple similarities, things start to look less coincidental and way more intentional. But wait, there's a bit more. We can't forget about the last piece of evidence, their personas. As most of us know, Futaba's starting persona is Necronomicon, while Baofu's starting persona is Odysseus. Both persona users have different starting personas but that can't be said for their ultimate forms of their personas. Futaba and Baofu both share the final persona of Prometheus. This is a nice connection, but we can go further with it. Prometheus has multiple appearances in the series already, so its appearance alone in P5 isn't anything new. Prometheus' design is varied throughout the series, but when it comes to its appearance in P2 and P5, we start to see design consistency. In P2, Baofu's version of Prometheus takes a more robotic slash humanoid form while well, Futaba's take on Prometheus is a spherical space station. You may want to write this off right then and there, but hear me out. Both persona designs are rooted in technology, and if we look closely at the designs, we can see that the connections are clear as day. The color schemes these two versions share clearly relate to each other, with Futaba's version even copying the rune design pattern that is found on Baofu's version of Prometheus. With this design philosophy, it makes Futaba's Prometheus look like a natural evolution of Baofu's persona, making it look like Futaba inherited Prometheus from Baofu, and making their relationship and lineage even harder to question. Now all this can sound convincing when you wrap a nice little bow around everything, but unfortunately I have to ask myself a question. Where do we draw the line between intentional lineage and design easter egg slash inspiration? All this could have been done to pay homage to the original character of Baofu instead of it being a direct family bond. So unfortunately I can't just outright say and confirm this theory is correct. But it does give an interesting perspective to Futaba's character and overall design. Could it be true? Yes. Is it likely though? Well, I'll let you decide that for yourself. But we're not done yet fam. There's still one more option left on the table. The bald thirsty sugar daddy will now have his time in the spotlight. If you're not sure who I'm talking about at this point, I'm referring to Masayoshi Shido. And let me get this out the way. The similarities between Futaba and Shido are nowhere near as strong as the connections as Futaba with Bafu, physically at least. But, but this doesn't mean there isn't any, and Shido personally has his own smoking gun. Shido has the luxury, or lack thereof depending on how you look at it, of having a direct connection and contact with Wakba herself, something Bafu doesn't have without theoretical speculation. The history of events surrounding Wakaba Ichiki is a tragic one, as we all know, with the lives of multiple parties intertwined. Wakaba is an unrivaled genius in her field of study, cognitive science, science with a PS. She is also known to be a bit of a workaholic, something her daughter can definitely relate to. She was the lead cognitive researcher for the Japanese government. Because of her job, she was put into contact with Sojiro Shido and eventually Akechi. Long before Futaba was born, the friendship that would blossom between Wakaba and Shojiro would happen during their time working for the government. The two enjoyed each other's company, and Sojiro was definitely quite fond of Wakaba. Unfortunately for Sojiro, Wakaba would shut down any of his advances. Wakaba wasn't the most social person, being very self-absorbed into her research. You could say she was very much like her daughter, being quite a socially awkward person. Now it's necessary for me to establish Wakaba's relationship with Sojiro before I introduce Shido. 
This will give context to future events, because during the time of Wakaba and Sojiro's friendship, Wakaba would have consistent contact with Shido as well. Shido was one of the people most interested in Wakaba's research, because it would be the key to Shido gaining power on the political ladder. And I'm not going to beat around the bush anymore. Shido is a power-hungry and oppressive manipulator. He is obsessively driven and will do whatever it takes to get what he wants, with or without your consent. Through events during Persona 5, it is known that Shido is a sexual deviant, using his power to manipulate women. It is heavily implied that Shido and Wakaba had a sexual encounter, given Shido's past behavior. Given everything we know, Wakaba isn't the promiscuous type. It's completely against their character. This would mean their encounter wasn't consensual. And it isn't out of Shido's character to leave a woman to bear a child alone, because he's done it before. Goro Akechi is Shido's bastard son. Akechi was conceived by a prostitute that was sexually assaulted by Shido. Shido ended up refusing to take responsibility for his actions, leaving Akechi's mother to raise him alone. This would eventually drive her into committing suicide. Now I find it odd that Wakaba wouldn't mention to Shojiro who the father was of her child. But knowing how dangerous Shido is, Wakaba probably didn't want to put her friend's life at risk. Because we know eventually Shido would contact Akechi to end the life of Wakaba and then manipulate the narrative to put blame solely on Futaba. But what is the key evidence that can link Shido and Futaba together? Well, it comes back to Akechi. Akechi also shares the same rare blood type of AB negative with Futaba. The likelihood of two characters that seemingly have no connections to each other is extremely hard to ignore. The fact that Akechi is AB negative strongly suggests that he inherited that trait from his father Shido. Meaning, if Shido slept with Wakaba, it would guarantee Futaba to inherit the blood type from two parents with it. In the end, making Futaba and Akechi half siblings, sharing the same father but two different mothers, born through infidelity. Now, in this journey we took to uncover Futaba's true father, the path took quite the dark turn. I know some points presented can be considered as circumstantial, but at the end of the day, these are mysteries left behind by the developers for us to answer. And sometimes, it's better to leave us fans speculating instead of giving direct answers to us. Because where's the fun in that? It may seem like we're no closer to our question from the beginning of the video, but what if we have been looking at it all wrong? And what if we've been asking the wrong question? The main question being, what is a father? Now, of course, this is a very broad topic with a large variety of interpretations, but simply put, a father is a man who gives wisdom. A father gives guidance. A father is a man who is strong, nurturing, protective, and has built up an unconditional bond of love for their child, blood or not. A father is someone who just wants to give you love and support, to see you grow and become the best person you can be. And that is the relationship that Sojiro and Futaba have. It doesn't matter that Sojiro isn't Futaba's biological father, because without a doubt, he is her family. Sojiro will forever be the only father figure that she will ever need. Once again, thanks for joining me on this journey and stick to the end of the video. As always, I would appreciate if you could, you know, do the normal YouTube stuff, like, comment, subscribe, you know the drill. But let me stop. I've kept you guys long enough. So as you do, catch you later, fam. I wouldn't give one if I could find a fun, fun, fun.